Hello, everyone. <coughs> oh, my God. What's up? It's DJ Mighty Iris back from the dead. Oh, my God. I was sick. I jinxed myself like that week of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. I felt myself getting sick. And then, yeah, it just all came crumbling down on me. It was insane. I have been home. I've never missed this many days of work ever. Uh, I'm finally back at work today. I've been sick since January 17th. It is now the 25th. Oh my God. And I know I have sick days to use and everything, you know, but it's just that that guilt of like not being here. And I don't know, it just, I, mean, I feel bad Ugh, missing that many days of work. That hasn't happened in, since I had COVID a few years ago. But uh, what's up? It's Iris. Um, I'm back in the office. And uh, speaking of office though, like I'm kind of digging this raspy voice that I have now. I feel like I could be like in that podcast, The Chicks in the Office. I don't know if you listen to their podcast or watch it on YouTube. I love watching their interviews, but these chicks, man they have the coolest most naturally raspy voices they have sexy voices and I always thought like man it'd be cool to know them and be in their circle and now I finally feel like I can be a part of that circle the only thing is I don't actually know them but um, I think if I can send them just this demo clip they could be like oh yeah she could be part of our of our little you know entourage anyway um, so what I had was I thought it was the flu I thought it was COVID <coughs> <clears throat> That's going to happen a lot. Sorry, I still have leftover cough that lingers the cranberries. Um, so uh, I have an upper respiratory infection. That's what I had. Um, I finally caved in on day five. I don't know. And went to the med clinic because the coughing fits that I was having, you guys, were no joke. I was like literally gagging and choking on my own coughs. My veins were like popping out. I felt like I was coughing my brains out. <coughs> And I probably was. I don't feel that much smarter, you know. <laughs> I probably lost some brain cells. Ah. And I'm telling you, oh, there was no sleep. This is why it's not a Dream Warrior podcast today. I'm just checking in. But I got no sleep. How can you sleep when you're just constantly like coughing? That <laughs> that urge, it just, it just comes out of nowhere. I could be falling asleep and I'll be asleep for maybe five minutes, ten minutes. And then, nope, I wake back up with the cops. So let me just tell you that from that night one, um, and I had fever and all that the first two nights. The TV did not turn off. I've had my TV on because no way in hell am I going to sleep or try to sleep in silence when I'm just constantly up and coughing. So the TV was on. I was binge watching Seinfeld. Um, I was watching Family Matters. <laughs> oh, my God. I finally like <laughs> it hurt to laugh because it made me cough. But Steve Urkel, man, that guy's something like he it just really brought me back to being a kid. And just everything he freaking says and does. He was cracking me the F up. Steve Urkel, man, especially Myrtle Urkel. Oh, my God. I was on season two. Woo. That episode still holds up where Myrtle tries to sneak into Eddie's room to kiss him. Anyway, um, I got into some new shows. Uh, I'm happy to say I've always wanted to, to watch The Love Boat from the 70s and 80s yes that love boat it's on paramount plus which i have um i put it on and you know what from that very first episode from the pilot you guys i fell in love with the love boat the love boat <laughs> anyway um such a good sh it's a comforting show oh my god the concept of it i fucking love it <clears throat> right in season one man you have suzanne summers um, I saw John Ritter, Scott Bayo, freaking um, Leslie Nielsen, Charo. I mean, there's so many celebrity. I guess that was their whole deal. But yeah, The Love Boat, fucking love The Love Boat. I cannot wait to watch all of those seasons. I put on some old movies that I hadn't seen in forever, never watched it all the way through. I watched Con Air. I never put on movies like Con Air, but I, you know what? I'm, I think I'm in love with Nicolas Cage. So um, I was like, you know what? I want to watch this. And it was fucking amazing. I love Con Air. It's great. People used to call me Cyrus the Virus all the time because I would call myself Iris the Virus in high school thinking I'm all cool. And they're like, oh, did you get that from Con Air? And I was like, what are you talking about? So um, anyway, uh, yeah, man, Con Air is the shit. Nicolas Cage is beautiful. John Malkovich, oh my God, he's amazing. I love his voice too. Speaking of voices, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like experimenting with some of these things, you know, like I started talking like this uh, for 1019 Kink. Um, if you tune in tonight or tomorrow night, I might just do it again. You know, I'm thinking of like doing the New Yorker, like I smoke too much kind of, you know, sexy Brooklyn accent. I'm not even sure I'm doing it right, but you know. <laughs> You never know. I'm hanging on by a thread here, okay? This is all I got. This is all I have, all right? 
I've been gone so long. I've been bored out of my mind. I've been glued to the TV. I learned French, okay? Yeah, mon dieu. That's how long I've been sick. So just, you know, bear with me here. Last night was the first night I was actually able to sleep, okay, for like a good six hours. So that was like a relief. It's torture, man. <coughs> So anyway, when I went to the med clinic, they prescribed me some steroid pills. Take two a day for five days, the doctor said. And you know what? I did it. Side effects include hair growth. Wow! In some very strange places, I might add. But nothing a good old-fashioned hair tweezer won't fix. A good old-fashioned hair tweezer from 1850. <laughs> so yeah, side effects are hair growth and tongue girth. Wow! I can't explain it. I'm just going to have to show it to you. <laughs> I'm glad I went to the freaking med clinic, though. If I didn't, oh, my God. Yeah, I'm just going to fluctuate in and out of this accent. So don't hate me. Don't judge me. Don't you dare judge me. <laughs> I'm really glad to be back at work. But yeah, at the same time, uh, I'm kind of dreading getting rid of this gnarly, sexual, raspy voice. I want to keep it. I want to keep it for just one week longer. As long as I'm not sick, I don't mind having this raspy voice. You got to check out those chicks in the office, that podcast, those two girls, man. I love listening to them because they talk like this. You know, they have this kind of raspy voice and I don't know. They talk about pop culture, stuff like that. Anyway, so, yeah, just wanted to check in and let you know that I'm feeling better. Not that you would have known I was sick because I didn't post it or anything. But, yeah, it's been hell. Um, I never want to have an upper respiratory infection. I'm glad it wasn't a lower respiratory infection. You know what I mean? Because that would have been so much worse. <laughs> I actually had that one year and I had to go to the emergency room. So, yeah, feeling better. Um, yeah, just going to keep taking that cough syrup. The last time I went to the ER a few years ago, though, they gave me this other kind of cough syrup. Oh, what was it called? It was so euphoric. They don't prescribe stuff like this anymore because, you know, it's one of those hardcore drugs. Codeine. Yeah, I think it was codeine. God, I miss that stuff. Not that I'm an addict or anything. Um, shut up, Iris. Anyway, okay, so um, that's it. Just wanted to say hi. I just wanted to let you hear this new raspy voice that I have going on that's probably going to go away in a few days. So, yeah, kind of a bummer, but I'm digging this. I feel like uh, I feel like this is a new uh, turning point in my life, you know, talking like this. Man, I, w I wish I could interview someone right now, for real. I just want to have this voice for a few more days. Just give it to me for a few more days, okay? Okay, I'm going to go sip on some tea. Have a great weekend.